Taylor Sheridan is back with his latest show in the Yellowstone universe. This is something that I've really been looking forward to getting released. I enjoy Yellowstone, 1923 was great, and 1883 was incredible. So Lawman Bass Reeves was a show that's been on my radar and one that I've been excited to watch, and it's safe to say that the first two episodes didn't disappoint. So with that, I thought I'd recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from the episode. So let's get into it. Here is Lawman Bass Reeves Episode 1 and 2 Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. Episode 1 The first episode quite literally took us on a journey from 1862 in Arkansas to the land that was far away from anybody, which was the Seminole Nation, and then returned back to Grayson County in 1865. Spanning through the time of the American Civil War, we saw how Bass Reeves essentially adopted the mindset that we went on to see him have in the second episode when he was eventually freed. Bass Reeves felt pain and suffering due to being enslaved, and he was fighting on the side of the Confederates during the war. His master was George Reeves, and despite it seeming like at one point, George was going to free Bass if he beat him at a game of cards. He ultimately went on and cheated Bass out of it, and was waving his power and authority over him showing the type of person that he was. George was essentially pardoned from the war and asked to leave, and it was something that made George feel small. So the only way that he could assert his authority moving forward was by waving it over Bass. This was a moment where you could really feel just how much it meant for Bass to be on the cusp of being free. The tears that were in his eyes, the shaking of his hands, and the nervousness that was in his voice. His freedom relied on the turn of a card, and it was a moment that really showed the passion that was inside of him. However, because he was cheating, it caused him to erupt out of anger. With Bass beating George because he was cheated by him, we saw him go on the run and leave his partner Jenny, as he would have been killed otherwise. This whole sequence was a part of the episode where you could really feel the pain and suffering that Bass was going through. The shot of his foot where he'd been walking through the terrain that looked harsh, it was brutal to look at. This was where he discovered Sarah and her child Curtis. He was truly on the cusp of death at this point because when she fired her weapon, he didn't react in the slightest. Sarah rescued him and gave him a home whilst he was there for a couple of years. However, with the war coming to an end in 1865 and Major Pierce leading a battle in Turkey Creek trading post after arriving there, he killed Curtis in front of Bass. Something which did surprise me because I thought there was a type of mutual respect between Bass and Major Pierce following the opening section but I guess not. I definitely think that Major Pierce is going to be a character that returns later on down the line. He's impacted Bass in a way that's personal, and even though Bass believes in justice and not being judge, jury, and executioner, that could be the one person that makes Bass question his own morals and maybe act outside the lines of the law. With Bass leaving the Seminole Nation and going back to Grayson County and then Fort Smith, he laid eyes on Jenny for the first time in years and she had a child with her, his child, Sally. This whole first episode was essentially about showing us the hardships that Bass went through, the confliction that was in his mind whilst fighting for the side that was against his own freedom, but at the same time, they also didn't recognize him. He obviously didn't want to, but he was in a situation where if he didn't, then he'd be killed, just like many others were. Bass's persona and personality was formed in this first episode over the space of five years. There's a line that he said in the second episode, black, white, or red, we're all just men. He doesn't see color, and that's because he's experienced all walks of life and has been exposed to everything, unlike what a lot of people were. So this episode was truly about showing us those five years during the war that shaped Bass into being the level-headed, respectful, and logical person. Episode 2 Episode 2 of the show opened up several years later in 1875. By this point, Bass had his own property, was living with Jenny, and they now had four children with a fifth on the way. We saw that Bass wasn't the most skilled when it came to being a farmer, and with the destruction of his crops, there would be no money that would get brought in to feed his family. This led to him being offered an opportunity where he was hired as a posse man for Deputy U.S. Marshal Cheryl Lynn. He was after somebody called One Charlie, and he wanted Bass due to the fact that he could speak the language that One Charlie spoke. It was during this time where we saw that Cheryl Lynn fought in the war and was on the cusp of being killed and scalped, something which defined his personality moving forward. There was a powerful line where Bass said to him, The scar on your head has chains on your heart, showing that what happened to him during the war was something that still had the man in the war in the present day, and it was causing him to judge everybody the way that he perceived them back then. 
something which also contributed to the brutal treatment of Charlie's cousin when he wanted to locate one Charlie, and also the inhumane death that he gave one Charlie by setting him on fire and being prepared to just watch him burn. Cheryl and Bass couldn't be further from each other in terms of their morals and beliefs. Bass is a man of God and despite being enslaved for most of his life, he still believed that there was greatness and that he'd get into heaven, something which he wasn't told his whole life. He was told that he'd go to nothing past his death, just darkness. Bass believes that humans are what made the chains that were put upon him, not God, whereas Cheryl is still of the mindset that people should pay and be punished at the hands of himself whilst he acts as judge, jury, and executioner, even though he is a lawman. During the scene that took place after they got one Charlie, we saw that Bass hit Cheryl because of what he was saying and the views that he had, something which meant that Bass wouldn't be paid for the work that he did. However, right at the end of the episode, we saw that Cheryl arrived at Bass's house and mentioned that Judge Parker wanted to offer Bass the opportunity to be a deputy US marshal. And in real life, Bass was actually one of the first black deputy marshals in the US. In the show, this was something which would help his family that were struggling for money with justice being something that Bass believed in and actually wanting to give it to one Charlie. We're going to be going on to see Bass doing what he was made to do. The real-life Bass Reeves was said to be described as absolutely fearless and knowing no master but duty. And with the way that he was portrayed in these first two episodes, it started as it means to go on. So it's going to be interesting to see where it develops. Overall review. I thought these first two episodes were really good. I've been craving a show like this since 1923 ended. 1883 is definitely the best, and this is billed as being part of that arm of the Yellowstone universe. And it definitely has the tone, style, and pacing that 1883 had, so I'm glad to see it. The performances were so convincing, and David Oyelowo did a phenomenal job in the role of Bass Reeves. The story is one that's definitely got me on the edge of my seat already, and they don't hold back in what they show. What makes Taylor Sheridan's shows so good is that the world genuinely feels real and like you're witnessing it happen. A lot of other shows that are set in this time often feel dramatized, but this one doesn't feel like that at all. We must remember as well, this is based on a real life individual and by reading up on him, it already feels like the first two episodes have stuck quite true to the nature of Bass Reeves. I can't wait for episode three to be released next week. I'll also be covering that on the channel too, so bring it on. So. There you have it, Lawman Bass Reeves Episode 1 and 2 Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, or Character Breakdowns, then click on the card in the top corner, or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, well, X, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of the first two episodes? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.